Welcome everyone. Today's tech talk is on the D and the A, B, C, D, E's of fall protection. And we're going to talk about rescue. Uh, rescue isn't spelled with a D, but the D stands for descent control. And that can loosely be connected with many rescue systems. And A, B, C, R, E would cause issues. So here D stands for rescue. Rescue can be a big word and can encompass many things. But the main takeaway that I'd like everyone to, to remember is to make and have a plan. If a fall should occur and a person is suspended in a harness, it's unacceptable and illegal not to have a rescue plan and leave them hanging. Every jurisdiction requires a rescue plan when a person is in a fall arrest system, and some whenever a person is in any active system. So just like there's a hierarchy of fall protection, there's a hierarchy of rescue. Some rescue methods are better than others. So we're gonna discuss a couple of simple rescue methods so you can start making a plan. The best rescue is not having to do one. So just like eliminating a fall hazard, you can eliminate the need for rescue by not using active fall protection. If you can eliminate the fall hazard, you also eliminate the need for rescue and the need for training and the need to use equipment and inspecting equipment and storing equipment and finding anchors and estimating clearances. I think you get the idea. You fix a lot of issues if you can eliminate the hazard. If your fall hazard can be protected by passive controls, guardrails, walls, covers, vertical netting, or alternative controls like warning lines and designated areas, these protective measures do not require rescue planning because the person is accessible by coworkers or emergency services. If an accident does occur, the rescue subject will be behind a barrier or on the walking working surface, but either way, they're still accessible. Rescue planning is required when the person is in an active fall protection systems because after a fall, many times they will be inaccessible. Two of the most common rescue methods are self-rescue and assisted rescue. Self-rescue is where the rescue subject gets back to safety under their own power without assistance, and assisted rescue is where they get some help. Keep in mind that chair in the air or suspension trauma straps are not self-rescue because the rescue subject remains suspended. These devices are beneficial and they're designed to address suspension trauma and can safely extend the amount of time for rescue, but they don't fully rescue the person. Self-rescue methods include a person climbing back onto the structure to safety or using self-rescue equipment like the switch point rescue system. Self-rescue is identified by the rescue subject doing it all themselves and no one else is involved or at risk. The benefits of self-rescue are obvious, the person does it all themselves, but the main disadvantage is the person may not be able to help themselves. A rescue subject may be incapacitated and unable to conduct the self-rescue. So the next level of rescues are assisted rescue methods. And these rescue methods are where co-workers or rescue people facilitate the rescue, but are at minimal risk to themselves. Assisted rescues are identified that only the rescue subject is suspended. All of the rescuers are protected by some other means. One of the easiest rescue methods is to use a portable ladder. Depending on where the rescue subject is, it's completely acceptable to place a ladder underneath them for support and have them climb down once all the excitement settles down. Another assisted rescue method is to use a lift. If a lift can get to them safely, using a lift is quick, especially on locations where several lifts and trained operators are available. Another assisted rescue method are rescue ladders. The rescue ladder is anchored and sent down to the rescue subject who either climbs out or at least grabs onto the ladder and regains their composure. Using a self-retracting lifeline with rescue retrieval option is another assisted rescue method. There are several other rescue methods that gradually increase in complexity and risk when you involve evacuation, suspended rescue methods, emergency response teams and fire departments, and some difficult locations like towers, wind turbines, penstocks, cranes, and several different confined spaces. The list can go on and on. But to start, look at your work area and see if elimination is an option, and then move into self-rescue and assisted rescue methods before defaulting to more complex and higher risk rescues. So thanks for tuning in. Reach out to your local Warner rep if you have any questions.